composite functions are a way of finding the solution to one equation based on the answer of the second one. We know that x is referred to as our input and the y is our output. We put a value in, we get a result. Well, when we have a composite function, it's saying that we, the input of our second function is the output of our first one. So we solve, get an answer for the first one, and then we plug that in to the x or the input of our second function. And we have two different ways of writing this type of notation. We have f of g, so and all f and g are, are the names of functions. This is the f function, this is the g function. There's really nothing to it beyond just being able to separate them and be able to say this is the first one, this is the second one. So the f, basically f of g, um, and this o, it, it looks like an o, but it's smaller than that. And this is a function composition symbol. This lets you know that you're getting your answer to your f function based on the output of your g function. This is also written like this. Solve for f based on g's answer, okay? So if we look at this, this is saying start with g, because we solve what's inside the parentheses before we move outside of it, basically. So find a solution for g. Well, I'm not given a value for x, so I can't really solve. This is my answer. So what I do is this kind of refers back to almost the substitution method with the systems of equations. We take our answer, our output, from this first function, and we put it as the input of our second function. So I replace x with its value. So the function of x is x minus 6. I'm replacing the x plus 6. Okay, so now I can go and evaluate that. Well, this parenthesis is here just to show that it's replacing the x value. If I have x minus 6 plus 6, what does that simplify to? The function of x, so y, equals x. Guess what? When this happens, it means these two, when it's composite and you simplify and you're left with just an x, these are inverse functions. They are the x and the y's um, switched out, okay? Uh, so you should have watched the Khan Academy video already, which would kind of explain how this all works. So we know that these two are the inverse of each other. If I plotted, did a table of values of x and y, and then did that for the other one, and I graphed them, they would be a mirror image of each other on a graph, um, because they're, they're just opposites. So I can also be asked to solve this in a reverse order. Instead of uh, the function of g's output, I can have g of f of x. So that means, in this case, I have to solve the f function first. I'll change pen colors. I have to solve the f function first and use its solution as the input then of my g function. So this is my f function. I didn't have a value to plug into x, so this is as far as I can go. This is my answer. I plug that in, or <laughs> plug that in there. So if I have x plus 6 minus 6, guess what? It still simplifies to x. So just pay attention. The inside one, you plug into the x of the outside. Now we might be given another set of functions where if I plug one into the other, I know just looking at this, there's no real similarity. This is not going to simplify to x, therefore I know these functions aren't inverses, but I can still at least solve for them. So this says uh, the function of the com composite, you know, uh, function of f of the composite g. Let's go ahead and plug this in. So this is saying solve for f based on g's output. I'm not given a value for x to plug in to solve to get an actual number value for my answer to be able to plug into f. So that means this is my output and this gets plugged in for x in my f function. So I write 4 and I replace x with its 
value from the g function, 2x squared plus 3x, and then plus 2. Now I have to use the distributive property. 2 times 4 gives me 8x squared. 3 and 4 gives me 12x, and then I just have a 2. So the function of g of x, that's our solution. The last thing to remember with inverse functions is that Inverse functions are values where the x and y places are switched. So from the Khan Academy video, it explained that you have an input, you get a solution. Now you are taking that solution and you're trying to trace it back to basically the origin of what had created that. This is our domain and range. Now we're given the range and we've got to figure out what domain had led to that. And the uh, the notation for this being the inverse, that this is my range and I'm trying to find the domain, or this is my y and I'm trying to find its x, is this negative 1. Now that negative 1 as an exponent isn't actually talking about using it as a negative exponent of the reciprocal, uh, like we had with the other you know, exponential functions, but this is just our showing of how these two values balance out. So if in this case my input was 3 and my output was 6, my output is here, so then basically here's my input. I'm just switching the x and y values. That's all that is. So if I was given the function, the inverse function of um, 8 and it equaled 2, guess what? The function means that my input as a regular function would have been 2 to create an output of 8.